In the 1970s, the Voyager spacecraft embarked on an unprecedented journey into space, lasting over 45 years. These spacecraft, built and equipped in a very simple manner, provided unique data and were the first human-made objects to venture into interstellar space. Voyager 1, in particular, surprised NASA when it suddenly detected a strange signal while flying millions of kilometers away from Earth. Radio waves in interstellar space. In 2012, Voyager 1 entered interstellar space, which is the region of space beyond the actual reach of our Sun and the nearest stars. To this day, interstellar space remains full of mysteries. We know very little about what happens in this seemingly empty space. Since Voyager 1 was built in the 1970s, it is a very simple technical device. Both Voyager 1 and its twin probe Voyager 2 are equipped with basic measuring instruments, cameras, and radio wave receivers. The cameras were turned off many years ago to save power, but the radio wave receivers are still active. Recently, something very peculiar occurred. For a long time, everything was quiet near Voyager 1, but then the spacecraft suddenly transmitted sounds to Earth that caught the attention of researchers. At a distance of 23 billion kilometers from Earth, a faint and persistent hum manifested itself. According to scientists, the hum was so weak that it had to be technically amplified to be audible. After the sensational news that humans had received the first sounds from interstellar space, scientists immediately provided an explanation. It is highly likely that the faint waves originate from the gases within the interstellar medium, which consists primarily of hydrogen and plasma. There are disturbances that are probably still caused by the influence of solar winds, even at this distance in space. It remains to be seen what other data Voyager 1 and 2 will transmit in the coming months. Both probes will likely continue flying through space for thousands of years. However, NASA predicts that radio contact with the probes will cease this year, or at the latest next year. This will mark the end of an era that lasted over 45 years and provided humankind with a unique view of space. After all, the Voyager probes were the first to fully study and photograph the outer planets, as well as provide insights into the Kuiper Belt and the farthest regions of the solar system. Where does the solar system end? For a long time, researchers did not know the answer to this question regarding where our solar system actually ends and interstellar space begins. Our star constantly releases plasma flows into space through its solar winds, forming a spherical hemisphere encompassing the entire star system. After spending the first decades of their journey studying the planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, the probes ventured farther into unexplored regions. During their long journey, these probes were exposed to great stresses and strains, yet the technology has worked perfectly all these years. Today, experts attribute this fact to the probe's simple yet effective design. The technological difference between the Voyager probes and modern ones is roughly comparable to that between an MP3 player and a cassette recorder, or between a smartphone and a basic telephone. Naturally, researchers hoped that the technology would last long enough to allow us on Earth to obtain data from the edge of the solar system for the first time. These expectations were realized many years after Voyager 1 left the last planets behind. The probe radioed data about rapidly changing magnetic fields, having never before seen or measured where and how the basin of our sun ends. Researchers were unaware of which layers of the heliosphere Voyager 1 was actually located in. From a scientific standpoint, astronomers were entering uncharted territory with this mission. Communications on Earth were significant, and every signal, every movement of the probe's measuring instruments was met with great joy. The end of the solar sphere appears to be dominated by bursts. It can be thought of as winds and luminous fields that sometimes overlap and become weaker or stronger at certain points. Researchers managed to measure a violent solar burst weeks after reaching the boundaries of the solar system. This is the time it took for the plasma flows to travel the 10 to 15 billion kilometers to the end of the solar system. Plasma flows move through space at a speed of about 1,000 kilometers per s, making them much slower than light. For a plasma flow originating from the sun to reach Earth, it usually takes only one or two days. Voyager has provided fascinating data on particle flows and solar winds, 
and has been able to receive radio waves from distant solar bursts at the edges of the heliosphere. The sun's plasma clouds, which are still relatively hot and less dense, encounter the cooler and denser interstellar plasma. The aerodynamic difference shapes the heliosphere and compresses it at its outer edge. Voyager's measurements showed much denser flows just before the probe entered interstellar space. Our solar system is not static in space or firmly suspended in plasma. Instead, the Sun and its planets move through the interstellar medium at a speed of about 84,000 kilometers per h. Thanks to Voyager's measurements at the heliosphere's edge, these numbers have been confirmed for the first time. In a sense, the solar system was flying together with the small probe. It was a great surprise to see how the probe's flight behavior changed as soon as it entered interstellar space. The mystery of interstellar space. So far, we know very little about the vast space between the stars and star systems, between the outer limits of the solar system, the heliosphere, and the nearest star. There are empty spaces spanning 40,000 billion kilometers. At that point, we would reach our next neighboring star, Alpha Centauri. From there, there are still trillions of kilometers to the next star, and so on. Today, we already know that interstellar space is far from empty. On the contrary, it contains gas, particles, beams of light traveling through space, and the mysterious dark matter. The interstellar medium can be seen as the cosmic substrate or space itself. Until the beginning of the 20th century, researchers believed that the space in which our universe exists was actually empty, and that the stars and planets were firmly suspended within it. It was only through the work of Albert Einstein and some of his contemporaries that we know the entire universe is incredibly dynamic, and all objects are constantly moving and subject to change. It is highly likely that interstellar space and its underlying structures host forms of matter previously unknown, as well as structures and filaments along which the known forms of the universe move. Where are the Voyager probes headed? Both Voyager probes are equipped with plutonium batteries, which have an incredibly long lifespan but are not inexhaustible. Many of the probes' measuring instruments and cameras were turned off at the latest after passing the heliopause to save precious energy. Communication with the probes still functions at this enormous distance through ordinary radio waves. At present, it takes about 23 hours for a signal to reach Earth. As mentioned earlier, radio contact with Voyager 1 will be lost at some point this year. Afterwards, the probe, along with its twin, which has also been in interstellar space for some time, will continue to fly nonetheless. So far, the probe has traveled approximately 129 astronomical units. It is unknown how much farther Voyager 1 will go. The probe could continue flying through the cosmos for centuries or millennia. According to current calculations, Voyager 1 will reach the star AC plus 79388 in the constellation Ursa Minor in about 38,000 years. Since the distance is likely to be around 1.7 light years, the probe will probably not be captured by the star system, but will keep flying until it is captured by a gravitational network. It is conceivable that at some point, Voyager will enter a distant star system and gradually move closer to the star, following the paths of gravitational attraction. At that point, the probe may burn up in a star, collide with an asteroid, or be discovered by an extraterrestrial civilization. In this case, both Voyager probes carry messages from our world. Voyager 1 and 2 were equipped with a golden record each. The records contain musical pieces, images of everyday life, sounds, and information about Earth and the human species. To ensure extraterrestrials can correctly play the records, there is also an easily understandable pictorial instruction manual. Experts believe the golden records have a lifespan of several billion years, so it is very likely that the messages will be received by someone sooner or later if we humans still exist at that time. Whether a receiving civilization will be able to respond to our message is something we cannot know today. After over 45 years, the Voyager missions are slowly coming to an end. The probes continue their journey, but we will no longer be able to follow them. NASA scientists are satisfied with the incredible success, but also feel a bit of sadness at the farewell. Many technicians, researchers, and other specialists involved in the project have spent almost half of their lives accompanying the Voyager missions. However, it is clear that space offers many other exciting mission destinations, ensuring that astrophysicists and NASA experts will never be bored. Today, 
We have reached the end of this journey with the Voyager probe, and we thank you for following along. Now we would like to hear your opinion in the comments. Tell us what you think about the mysterious radio waves detected by the Voyager probe in interstellar space. Do you think that we humans will explore interstellar space in the near future? And what do you think we might find there? Share your thoughts and ideas with us, and if you'd like, give the video a thumbs up.